Uh, G Fuel sent me this flavor like four months ago and I just completely forgot about it. <laughs> Literally found it as I was packing boxes for the move and I was like, uh oh, I should probably do that. So this flavor is called Sage Mode and it's from Naruto. I think I said that right. Should point out this is obviously a pre-recorded video. I'm actually making this on Sunday the 19th. Nothing like a weekend spent working, am I right? I know nothing about this flavor. <laughs> Smells like peaches. Actually not bad, it just caught me really off guard. The flavor is pomelo white peach. I don't know what that is, but to me it tastes like orange peach, although it feels like the orange hits you first and that's why I was caught by surprise, but honestly not too bad. I'd say like 7.4 out of 10. Anyway, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another video and happy Friday. Today's video, I'm gonna be giving you guys another requested video and that is a head coach video. I didn't really know what to do because some of you guys wanted me to rank the head coaches. Some of you guys wanted me to just talk about the new head coaches. So I think I'll just do a little bit of both and we'll call this video the hot seat. I'm gonna go over every single head coach in the league currently and I'm gonna tell you guys how warm or how close I think they are to being fired. Couple quick things before we start the video. One, head over to gfuel.com, use code Wyatt's World, save yourself a discount on any G Fuel products. And two, if you're 18 years or older, head over to Prize Picks, the daily fantasy app where code Wyatt's World will match up to $100 of your first deposit. Remember guys, always play responsibly and let's get into the video. Okay, here we go, ladies and gents. Welcome to the hot seat. Basically, this is just an ordinary tier list, but I have it separated like this. At the top, we're gonna have the coaches who I think could be fired any minute. Under that, we're gonna have coaches who are on the warm seat, meaning I don't think they could be fired any minute, but they're definitely not safe. In the middle, we got the new brood, which is obviously just the new set of coaches. Under that, we've got the cool seat coaches, which means I don't think they're 100% safe, but I would not expect them to be even close to really being fired. And then at the bottom of the list, we're gonna have the coaches who live with no worries, meaning their job is secured, it's safe, they're not gonna get fired anytime soon. And with that being said, we can now begin after I mix up the list because I gotta do that. All right, so our first coach is gonna be Zach Taylor, and I'm gonna put him in the cool seat. I don't think he's got a ton to worry about. I know occasionally he does make a coaching error on offense that'll end up biting the team harshly, but ever since acquiring a healthy Joe Burrow, he's pretty much just made that team really good. And unless next season is like a severe downfall, I, I don't see him going anywhere. Should be noted though, without Joe Burrow, his record is trash. After Zach Taylor, we've got Kevin Stefanski. I'm actually gonna say warm seat. I don't think he's gonna be fired, but I could see him getting fired mid-season if the Browns aren't in contention. I mean, for one, it's not exactly a good look that he helped get rid of Baker Mayfield to bring in Deshaun Watson, which so far has just flopped in their face. But for two, his last couple years in Cleveland have not really been all that great. Came in, went 11 and 5, and then he went 8 and 9, and now he went 7 and 10. Gotta fix that, man. After Kevin Stefanski, we've got Doug Peterson. He's got no worries in the world right now. Well, why would he panic? Left the Eagles, took a year off, came back, and brought a dumpster fire of a team to the playoffs? No, dude, you're you're peachy. After Doug Peterson, we've got Dan Campbell. Cool seat. Uh, he's not 100% safe, but I don't think he's even close to being fired. He is an unorthodox coach, but he is a beloved coach. Yeah, he's not gonna do things the typical way. He's gonna make some bone headed decisions that sometimes are going to win you a game and sometimes they're going to lose you a game. But the guy has got a literal heart of a lion. He's never given up on that team. And honestly, he's put them in a really good direction so far. I don't think Dan Campbell's going to go anywhere. After Dan Campbell, we've got Todd Bowles. Ah, uh, he's going to be fired any minute. He should be fired any minute at least. He's not a good head coach. He's 34 and 50. He just came off of a catastrophically bad season with a team that should have been really good. I understand as an assistant coach, he's won rings and stuff, but as a head coach, he hasn't done anything other than suck. All right, up next, we've got Arthur Smith opposite of Todd Bowles. He's had a catastrophically bad team and he's somehow made them look okay. I, maybe a cool seat? I want to say there's no worries. Personally, I think Arthur Smith is a really, really good coach. Terrible defense. Offense having absolutely nothing. Yet he's able to generate points and win games. I'm not kidding you. 7-10 and 10 with the Atlanta Falcons that he's had should be looked at as like a 13-4 and 4 record. After Arthur Smith, we've got John Harbaugh. I refuse to believe he's on the hot seat or a warm seat or anything like that. I know some Ravens fans talk, but I just, I don't believe it. 
The only thing I wish he would do different is kick the damn ball, John. You don't need to go for it every time because that I've seen lose them like six games. But when it comes to winning, he knows what to do. He's proven that. He has a ring to show for it. Like, he's a good coach. After John Harbaugh, we got Matt Uberfluss or Eberfluss or whatever. I can't imagine he's close to being fired. He's had one year in Chicago and pretty much nothing to work with. You know, he goes out there next year and they go 3-14 and 14 again or whatever it is. Then maybe, yeah, we can start talking. But he hasn't had a fair chance. After him, we've got Kyle Shanahan. Cool seed. I, he's, it's weird. He's a good coach, but why does he keep choking in the postseason? And I know injuries don't help, but like, I mean, come on, man. Every time they get to the postseason, he chokes. And they did get to the Super Bowl once, and he choked. He knows how to win. He knows how to get there, but does he know how to win the big one? I, eh. After Shanahan, we've got Mike Vrabel. I don't think there's a worry with him, and I could be wrong on that, but from general observation, every single time... The Titans are completely written off and they should be terrible. He makes them okay. Out of five seasons, he just had his first negative season ever going 7-10. and 10, And his team was by far the worst I think it has been in those five years. He's chilling. Next coach we got, Andy Reid. Okay, next, Robert Sala. This year, I think, cooled him off quite a bit. I would honestly have him on the warm seat, but his team helped him, his defense helped him, and it's no secret the guy doesn't have a quarterback. They don't have a way to drive down the field other than Brees Hall, and we saw what happens when they just rely on him. He dies. He went from 4-13 and 13 to 7-10. and 10. You know, maybe if they get Aaron Rodgers and miss the playoffs, then you can start pointing fingers, but right now, I don't think it's his problem. All right, up next, we've got Mike McCarthy, and this one's odd because I always thought they were just hanging on to him until they could get Sean Payton, and now that Denver has him, obviously Mike is probably going to stay in Dallas for the foreseeable future. I just, I really don't think he's that good of a coach. I think his clock management is terrible, and he's constantly been surrounded by elite squads. You go from having two top 10 quarterbacks all time in Green Bay to Dallas, where you have a generational defense and an offense full of talent as well. Like, it's just... I don't know. I probably just sound like a hater right now. I'm going to say he's on the warm seat because I always just view him on, on the edge of getting fired. I think he's a coach who's carried by his teams and the only thing he's really, really good at is setting records at the old country buffet. After Mike McCarthy, we've got Bill Belichick next. After Bill Belichick, we've got Ron Rivera. Here we go. He could be fired any minute. He should be fired any minute. And I believe they're just waiting to sell the team. For anybody who missed it, he got his team eliminated last year without realizing that elimination was on the line. If you're that in coherent you're that uninvested that uninterested in your squad like you don't belong there in the first place i think he needs to go aside from that they haven't been going in the right direction since acquiring him anyway it just it's not been a good fit part ways up next, we got Mike McDaniel. He's on a warm seat. I, I don't care what the Dolphin fans say, and some might agree with me, but he's had a lot of controversy surrounding him and Tua playing, you know, when he shouldn't have been. He's also had a lot of controversy on how he ended the season terribly. Started out great, and then you lost for like the last two months of the season and got bounced from the playoffs right away. Like, I, it's just seemed kind of like an immature, cocky head coach. After the Finns, we've got the Giants and Brian DeBall. There's no worries there. He was coach of the year. After Brian DeBall, we're on to Nick Sirianni. He's got no worries. He just needs to stop being such an ass. You've done great things. I mean, you really, you went into Philly when they were supposed to be nothing last year. You brought him to the playoffs. Then your second year, you brought him to the Super Bowl. You're a great head coach, man. Just, just stop acting like an absolute clown. After Sirianni, we got the first of the new brood. Who is this? DeMarco Ryan? D'Amico Ryan, sorry, I just had to look it up. Uh, I don't know a lot about this guy. I know Denver really wanted him, and then he chose Houston over Denver. But other than that, I don't know a lot about him other than the fact that he's from San Francisco. So I, I, I believe he's good. He knows what to do, but he's a new guy. So good luck to you, man. Up next, we got the Colts, and that's another new brood. Shane Strachan, Strachan, I don't know, the OC from the Eagles. He's going to be really good. I think that's going to be a good fit in Indy. He's just going to have to get himself a quarterback, and they just happen to have the fifth overall pick. So I have a good feeling that but uh, Indy's gonna have a solid future. After Indy, we've got the Bills with Sugar Sean McDermott. Ah, uh, cool seat. Cool seat that could be slowly transitioning into the warm area. I, I like Sean, but for one man, you got to stop calling defensive timeouts when the game is on the line. And for two, you got to start understanding when the game is on the line. Seems like sometimes he has a lack of urgency. And I also think he has a lack of patience, hence why Buffalo gives up on the run game after three plays every single game. I understand he's not the one calling every play, but he is the head coach. I like him, but he's not perfect. There is things for him to work on. And he also chokes in the postseason every year too. Hey, I'm not just ripping on San Fran. We're right there, buddy. 
Up next, we've got Kevin O'Connell. I have absolutely no reason to believe he has anything to worry about. First year as a head coach, and he won 12, 13 games with a historically bad defense. After Kevin O'Connell, we've got Sean Payton, and I can rank Sean Payton because he is not new to this game. And right away, I'm going to go ahead and say there's not going to be a lot of worries with him. They paid him a lot. They signed him to a big deal, and Sean Payton is a winner. I know I said I guarantee the Broncos are good last year. I, I, I seriously guarantee it. They will make the playoffs next year. After Sean Payton, we've got Sean McVay. No worries with him as long as he wants to coach there. He's going to coach there. Last year, they did historically bad for a Super Bowl championship team. Also, I don't think I've ever seen a Super Bowl championship team shatter like that. Like they, I mean, they literally shattered. He's a great head coach. After Sean McVay, we've got Brandon Staley. I refuse to believe he is safe at all. I think he could be fired any minute. They're looking and blaming everybody but the actual problem, which is him. He is an imbecile. People think this guy is a genius because he has an extended vocabulary. Like they really just took that and ran with it. After Brandon Staley, we've got Pete Carroll. You know, I don't know. I, I really don't know. I thought he may have been close to getting fired at one point, but now they just went to the playoffs again with a team that shouldn't have been good at all. What What is there bad to say about Pete in this time? Like, I, I don't think there is any. I think as long as he wants to remain coach there, and I know that he is also part of the ownership in the team too, like, he's not going anywhere. He doesn't have to worry. After Pete Carroll, we've got Josh McDaniels. Okay, he's he could be fired any minute. I know he's not going to due to financial reasons. That's the only reason he's on the team right now. But any second, Mark Davis could swallow his pride and fire this guy. Just like Todd Bowles, he's won championships as an assistant, but as a head coach, he has been nothing but awful. All right, next team we got is the Panthers, and that is Frank Reich. Uh, I can rate him because he's not really new either, although he is to the Panthers. I'm going to say Frank's on the cool seat. They're hiring him with the expectation to do better, which they absolutely will, but they should not expect to go to the Super Bowl right away because they don't have the team to do that. But they do have the team to win that division, and I, I think they will. They're going to have to win less than like eight games to get Frank fired, I think. I otherwise, he should be okay. Up next, we've got the Cardinals, and they have Jonathan Gannon, Philly's defensive coordinator. They lost their whole coaching staff. Philadelphia runs the league. Uh, New Brood, I think he's going to be very good. I think anybody coming from Philly is going to be good. They know what they're doing, and he'll be a billion times better than Cliff Kingsbury. I just hope he can get along with Kyler Murray. And up next, we've got Matt LaFleur. Uh, I think he's in between hot and cool, but I'll, I'll say cool just because their team was kind of a disaster this last year although I don't really love the fact that seems like Matt LaFour has the same game plan every single week win lose or draw he doesn't care he goes out there with the same plan and I just talked about this last week when you're a team that is losing that's the worst thing you can have because you know that the following week and the week after that and the week after that you're not changing anything and you gotta hope the other teams are just worse than you in order to win after Matt LaFour we've got Mike Tomlin no worries and after Mike Tomlin we've got Dennis Allen I'm gonna say he's on the warm seat I know they're bringing him back but I just I I don't think he is head coaching material. I don't think he's a very bright head coach. And I think after this season, if they're not in the playoffs, which they won't be, he's going to be fired. His head coaching record is 15 and 38. Anyway, that is going to be it, guys, for my head coaching hot seat video. I hope you guys liked this video, and I hope it satisfied all your requests. If you guys did like it, though, you already know what to do to show support. Comment, like, subscribe, turn that bell on. I do my absolute best to post on this channel every single day. Everything I just said, however, I'm going to hop off and get this edited so you guys can watch it on time. I hope you all have a fantastic weekend, and as always, I will see you in the next video.